How are you today? I'm doing well, you know. Uh, the day started out with us being on a lot now. Um, I don't know if it was because someone was stabbed or saw it in, in another cell house uh-huh. or because the prison was short staffed, but um, we were on modified lockdown, so we haven't had any much movement outside of being able to circuit within the bed area, but mm. it's all right. It, you can expect stuff to happen, you know, on a given day in the prison, so, you yeah. I don't, I don't look forward to it, but it happens. So I take it all in stride. Yeah. How often does does it happen that you that you have lockdown? Um, lockdowns have happened more frequently than they had in the past. <laughs> I would say, um, I would say it's probably five lockdowns a year. I've probably been on. 150 to 200 lockdowns or more. But lockdowns are happening more frequently due to shorter staffs and more assaults uh, happening within the institution. And, um, yeah, family day or they're celebrating some type of holiday or something, you know. So, yeah, uh, hmm. I would say five a year. Now there's probably 10 a year. Okay. You know, eight to 10 lockdowns a year. So, yeah. Yeah, so almost every month one, huh? Absolutely. So, but and they vary in length according to the severity of whatever uh, necessitated the lockdown. Yeah. So there, are, there are more, more, more restricted lockdowns and and less restricted lockdowns, right? To say that again. So there are different types of lockdowns. Some of them are more restricted, and so, some of some some are, are more light, like light light lockdowns. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Determine who can come out. And uh, the length of the lockdown Determ- is determined often by the, the incident um, that caused the lockdown. Yeah, okay. So because I remember once when we were still just writing, you told me there was really a really hard lockdown, like for weeks uh, you, you did, didn't have yeah. really contact to the outside, right? Yes, 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 yes. Recently uh, uh, a civilian was murdered here. Oh, okay. uh, during the time I actually went back to court. And the lockdown lasted for seven weeks, I think it was, two and a half months, somewhere in there. But I, um, yeah, before that, we were locked down for seven months due to the COVID restrictions. And, oh. and a, a, a prisoner was killed and a officer was killed in close succession. And in addition to the COVID restrictions, we were locked down for seven months. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, yeah, it was a trying time. That was really hard, yeah. 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 Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. I mean, for seven months, you know, no recreation. You only come out for a shower, that's it. Yeah, wow, okay. Every three days. Yeah, yeah. I remember you wrote me about that. Yeah. So so what what, a... <laughs> what what do you do in such a situation to to maintain, let's say, mental and, and physical health? The first thing you do is try to get a routine that you can do you try to order your day rather than just going through the course of the day because you know you're going to be in the cell all day short of coming out for a shower on every third day. And that's going to be a coughing and noises and they're going to bring the trays to you three times a day. Outside of that, you, that is the interaction with the environment you're going to have. Short of the people on either side of you, below you or above you, you're talking to them over the range if that's something you choose to do. Beyond that, while you're in the cage, you try to find me personally. I try to meditate. I try to read. I try to exercise. I try to uh, drink water, pray, and potentially listen to a little music, watch some television, and maybe draw something. Doing those types of activities helps me stave off the effects of the environment in general. So uh, a, a, a combination of them or all of them helps me to um, get through the day, essentially, because there's something to do. Okay, I'm bored with this. What next? What else can I do? What else can I do? What else yeah. can I do? Have an agenda and trying to stay on the routine. Basically, the days just slip away. They slip away. You know, you try to block out the outside world mentally. Yeah. You know, and uh, just go forward. Mm. So you have then like a plan for the day with times. So you say like from from six to to eight meditation, and then and then from eight to nine breakfast, and then exercise. And so you 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 like you, you watch the watch the clock and you say okay now that's the next 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 item. I actually don't watch the clock. 
Uh, okay. I actually didn't watch the clock. You always know that relative to some type of time because of the trays coming. Yeah. It's breakfast time, there's lunch time, and it's dinner time, mm. and the trays are going to come quarterly. And you can see the sun. So, and the days pretty much don't change. And there's an ebb and flow to the day in terms of men. They'll get up in the morning. There'll be a, a lot of excitement. You know, they're full of energy. And then as the day goes on, they start to wane. And then they'll go to bed at the night. The sun falls. And then they'll do the same thing again. So you have a certain sense of a biological clock of time. Yeah, and I try not to watch the clock because watching the clock makes the days long. Yeah. But when you find yourself bored, quote unquote, you have nothing to do. Then you find something to do. I want to read. I want to listen to some music. Maybe I need to pray. I try to get up in the morning. I try to meditate. Have me some water. Say my prayer. My prayer could be my meditation, in fact. Try to read something. I'm definitely going to read something. If I can't read anything, then I know uh, mentally I'm off mm. uh, because uh, I'm, I'm disturbed because reading is my meditation beyond mm. the actual meditation. I'm able to put my earplugs in and zone out with whatever I'm, the information I'm digesting. If I can't read, then I know I'm mentally in turmoil and I need to settle myself down, I need to center myself. Because yeah. there comes a time where you know you feel depressed and you don't even want to read, you know, when you're exhausted, you have you don't have enough food stores and energy to concentrate on reading. You're just laying there like, man, I need to go to sleep, you know, to, to, re, to rejuvenate, and then I can get back to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and reading oftentimes take up the bulk of my day. Well, I, I wouldn't say the bulk of my day. That is the thing that I've done the most in a day: read, digest, yeah. information. Yeah. So finding out about stuff because it it gives you inspiration, you become enthused, you know, you get enlightened, and it it changes your your your, your mental uh, prospects and the things that you're thinking about, rather than concrete and steel and other people's opinions and prerogatives and noise yeah. that they're making or minor irritations and frustrations. You've taken the time to put something that you want to to think about on your mind that you can wonder about. You filled yourself up with a different type of wonder, so it's wonderful. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, reading certain things. So yeah, so if that's possible in prison, you know, <laughs> had a wonderful day. Even mm -hmm. today, you know, I've been reading. Um, what I read, I'm reading um, uh, Secrets of uh, Secrets of Divine Love, which is a book about Islam and the love of Allah as it relates to Islam. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading a book called Her Box. The Egyptian Initiate, which is about Egyptian mysticism. So here we have the Arabic religion being um, explained, as well as the Egyptian "quote unquote" religion being explained. Those are the two things that I've done today so far. Mm -hmm. um, short of that, I got a book called "The History of Russia" that I'm ingesting. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's where I'm at. So th this this adjusted the actual bo books you're reading. Say that again. So these are the are the current books you are reading right now. What you told me. What oh the the book I'm reading right now is called uh, uh, Secrets of Divine Love. Mm -hmm. It's about Islam, and I'm reading uh, Herbach, the Egyptian Initiate, and I'm reading the uh, History of Russia. That's just three of them. I got about seven books I'm reading now, you know? <laughs> if I get more <laughs> one, I pick up the double, you know? <laughs> so you yeah, have you know? have always That's several great. several books in parallel you read. Like you, you, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's almost like watching a movie. You know, you get tired of that movie or it goes off, you turn to another movie. Or it may not be interest you as much, you go to another movie, you know, yeah. in terms of watching the television. You know, you can find yourself flicking through the channels endlessly to find something that interests you. So, yeah, it's the same with me with the book. Sometimes I don't want to digest this information, so I pick up a different book. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, I keep mm -hmm. them on tap. So it's an interest, interesting collection, what, what you're just reading. It's uh, um, about, let's say, religion and spirituality, Islam. Um, and Russia. And Russia. So Russia. The, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. History yeah. of Russia. The history of Russia. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. I, got, I have about four other books I'm in too right now, you know. But uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a motley crew of uh, information, I would mm -hmm. say. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and the, and the history of Russia, it, it's very interesting because I just I watched a very um, very very interesting series of lectures. Uh, university lecturers uh, of the University of Yale, so an American university, and they are uh, available on internet. The lectures of the professor—it's a very, very well-known 
um, East, European, East Europe specialist, uh, Mr. Snyder. And um, it's, it's a lecture about the history of the Ukraine. And oh. it's so interesting. I didn't, there's so many things I really didn't know about, about this area of, of, of the world the, where, where today Ukraine is. And it has such an old history and it started already with the Vikings and then there were the, the, the Slavs and there was this uh, Kiev, Kiev Rus. This was the first, first big... Rus. Rus, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oleg and, and, and Rurik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, it's really interesting what happened there. And then there was... Oh, yeah. yeah. So you, you're also into that. Is it because you're you're, yeah, you're just absolutely. To, yeah you you want to understand what's going on over there or why why do you read something <laughs> book like that? Well, it, it gives me a context about what to understand and how we got to the place that we are today. Yeah, okay. Because uh, everything happens. There's nothing happens in the vacuum. There's always something. There's a precedent. Something happens before we get to the moment. You know, and and, and understanding what's going on between Ukraine and and Russia. You know, have to understand the history, how they got to the place the war didn't just break out. You know, what brought them to the point? Yeah. Trying to understand the Israel-Hamas conflict, you have to understand war didn't just break out. Something brought them to that point. You know, so in reading the history, you can understand, oh, wow, yeah. okay. <laughs> I have a little better understanding of, you know, the present-day circumstances. So you bring what You have one minute remaining. Oh, lady. Hey. So you bring what happened in the past forward to today, it gives you a greater context. Yeah, okay. And a, a better understanding. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I, have a, I have other books I'm reading too, you know, but um, it's just, uh, man, yeah. God, it's incredible. I'm reading a book of the African Temples of the Anunnaki. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. We are already in the same stuff sometimes, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have a book I'm reading, uh, um, uh, African Critique of Critique of European Cultural Thought and Behavior. And um, it's called Urugu, um, which is a mythical figure of the Dogon people of Africa. And I'm reading um, Isis Keys to the Colors, the Isis Papers Keys to the Colors, which is a psychological analysis of Western culture. So the, the information I'm reading, when I turn the page, it's almost like I'm in the movie. I was like, ooh, they said, let's go get popcorn. Thank you for using GTL. Yeah. Now we are again at the break. This time we have the, the, the short phone, only 15 minutes phone. Um, and isn't it interesting how Ariel is, is um, educating himself? He's doing things we all should do, you know. If you, if you want to understand the conflict between Ukraine and, and Russia, you need to understand the history. So how it came all together, or if, if you read, if you are in the, uh, about Israel and the Hamas, you need to understand the history. That's really, really good. Hello, this is a prepaid call from an inmate at the Indiana State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. To refute your current balance is $40. 17 cents. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Okay, I'm back. You're back. Very good. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, there, there was this page turner, this this book. You, you, you I, I didn't get it really. Which which book was it? Where you say it's oh. like a movie almost. Yeah, it's like a movie. And I'm saying is I'm turning the pages of the book and I'm interested to see what's coming next. And it's like, let's go get popcorn. I'm like, no, no, I can't go right now. I'm going to miss something. You know? mm. So it's, it's intriguing. It's exciting. You know? Yeah. Just the topics of the book, you know? So yeah. The, uh, the, the newness of information, the stuff that you don't know, you know? Uh, like I was reading Herbach earlier today and uh, in the end notes, it spoke about the date of Christmas is relative to the festivals of Osiris that was practiced at the Temple of Abydos all the way back in time. Really? But, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because Osiris was considered to be the Christ. And he was the first one to have a passion. The passion of Christ was for Osiris, yeah. not for Jesus Christ. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned yeah. before the, this this uh, myth myth of the resurrection of uh, Osiris, right? Yeah, the Assyrian resurrection. Absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if you read, if you understand the Assyrian resurrection of Osiris, Isis, and his son Hero, which they call Horus, you understand the story of Jesus, Joseph, and Mary in a in a in a, in a way that never before that you'll never get out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Can you can you give can you give me a, a, a short excerpt about that? Do you think? Well, I'll just tell you. In the Temple of Luxor, they have four continuous friezes uh, in the wall that talk about the Annunciation, the Immaculate, the Immac the Immaculate Conception, the Virgin Birth, and the Adoration. These four things are inscribed on the wall in hieroglyphic relief, twelve hundred years before the coming of Jesus Christ in the Temple of Luxor. Mm -hmm. They're already there. As I said, the virgin birth, the immaculate conception, the annunciation, and the adoration, all the things that they talk about Christ as. So, as I said, Osiris was the first Christ, and the story of Osiris is the story of Jesus. It's just been adapted for a different nation, for a different people. But without having that concept or that understanding, then you have no reference point. But to understand that the Egyptian society is the longest society on the face of the earth. They have 30 centuries continuously. Of history, even more Lord maybe society has lasted time. that long, you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, it, in fact, where did the, the people, you know, they leave from? They always talk about Egypt, 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 in Africa. You know, <laughs> Moses was born in Egypt, was raised in the house yeah. of the Pharaoh. You know, learned all of their knowledge. Uh, when Herod was looking to kill the, the, the firstborns of the Hebrews, where they go to? They went to Egypt. Joseph became the second in command in Egypt actually fed his brother, saved him from famine when they came to see him. So so many things happened in Africa at large, and I always wonder, why is this? Then I guess get a different context, a different reference source of life. Oh, mm. I get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand. So, so you think, you it's, think uh, it's amazing. Yeah, you think Egypt is like like the like let's say the, the womb of all the cultures and in, in, in on the earth or what or what would you say? I wouldn't say that it's, it's the womb of all of them, but a great many of them, yeah. absolutely. And you can trace back the lineage or the, uh, the origin of a lot of things that exist in civilization back to the Egyptian culture, absolutely. I'm, a, I'm trying to get a grasp, understand, firm understanding of the Sumerians, the quote-unquote Anunnaki, and see how this relates to Egypt, mm. Babylon, and other cultures of the, the contemporary age mm -hmm. so that I can have this... Uh, bigger picture understanding in my head, you know, because I firmly believe, uh, quote unquote, Adam and Eve come from Africa central and they migrated to the rest of the world. But how does that relate to the civilizations and the culture of other people, you know, and how we understand it on the world stage today? That's what I'm attempting to understand. So in trying to put those pieces of the puzzles together, that's why I'm at in my search, you know, Because mm. I don't want to talk about something, not have the reference or the understanding of what I'm talking about. My yeah, understanding so. comes out of the Bible, mm. you know. So, uh, but looking at extra biblical information is starting to open my eyes. Like, oh, I didn't realize that. But like, yeah, the Bible is not the only book in the world, you know. Like when you go to school, you know, they don't just have one book. When you go to the library, there's other books on the shelf. And if you just read the Bible, then you'll have a, a small, laser-focused view about the world. But when you go extra-biblical, when you come outside of the Bible and understand that there are other cultures and other people that have a story as well, just as illustrious as the thing, the, the nation that's telling their story in the Bible, you're like, oh, now I can see how this correlates and it's interconnected and relates. So, mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, mm. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the word being amazed. It's yeah. like a labyrinth, you know. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you got to find your way through it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, wow. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Talking about the Anunnaki, there, there is an, I have to, to re research it maybe for next time. There is an Italian um, scholar and he, he got the... Um, He, he got like a, like the job from from the Vatican. How do you say it? He got it like a contract from the Vatican to do a new translation of the old Bible of the Old Testament. Uh -huh. 
And his translation was so different that the Vatican stopped stopped the contract. They didn't like it at all. And, Why wouldn't it? Yeah. Make perfect sense. Yeah. And... <laughs> And it's it's really amazing. I, I, I don't I maybe I, I try to prepare this for another call, but because it's so interesting what what he came up, and he, for him it's like um, that that it seems that the Bible doesn't talk only always about a God, but the, it talks also like about people who are superior, like a superior <laughs> type of. People who beings. were living beings or whatever who were living at this yes. planet. Yes. So that's yes. ah, really amazing. It's all there. Yeah. It's all there, and it makes perfect sense that the Vatican would stop it because it takes the power and authority away from the Vatican. Considering that the Pope is considered to be the vicar of Christ on earth, he is the representative yeah. of God here on earth. And was given the power to quote unquote the Apostle Peter. Jesus gave the keys to Peter and told him that this is the. Um, it would build your church on this rock. So the delineation from Christ goes to the Vatican, which mm -hmm. goes to the Protestant church, basically, which goes to King James. So if you give a, an, an interpretation of the Bible that's different from the one of, of Catholicism, then you like you destroy the theology, the doctrinal history of the church. And if you do that, you're going to the Inquisition. You're going to get burned at the stake. <laughs> or today you're going to cancel your culture. Cancel the culture, yeah, right. You yeah. can't, <laughs> you can't do that. So you take the, the authority of the Pope away. If you take the authority of the Pope away, your life is in danger. Yeah. I'm yeah. just be frank. You can't. It's not so. Mm. <laughs> you know, even people that have worked at the Vatican back in the day, high level officials, you could say, uh, be they Dominican friars or, or Jesuit priests. When they come up with interpretations about things that do not fit the doctrinal history of the church, either you uh, you repent or uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, you confess that you were wrong, or you um, show contrition, or you get burned at the stake. You die. They kill you. Yeah, and sometimes that's your excommunication. Yeah, and sometimes they don't you... just say take your book and leave. No, <laughs> they take your book and you leave Earth. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah, make yeah. You leave. <laughs> and, and and sometimes you anyhow w was burned, and uh, either you know it was always that you were killed for certain times. Yeah. And yeah. Um, another thing, because you you just mentioned Africa, um, do you are you aware about the Ark of the Covenant? And, yes, in actually Ethiopia. Yeah, in Ethiopia. That's also in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and what's about that? What what is your what is your idea if, about that? If if there is an ark of a covenant, I would assume that the people in Africa would have it because the story of the Bible takes place in Africa. We've come up with this mythical place called the Middle East, where we're at the northeast, the southeast, the, the, you know, they've cut Africa off from the Middle East by dredging the Suez Canal. So geographically, you can't say that this place is connected to it, literally. But in times past, this is basically Northeast Africa, essentially, or Asia Minor in terms of it being Southwest Asia. But I'm going to say it's Africa at large. Mm. And when the children of Israel split up through the diaspora, we know that there were two uh, delineations. There was the nation of Israel that went north, and there was the tribe of Benjamin and Judah that went south. They went south into either the Sinai principles, into Egypt, or into greater Africa. And it says that they took those items with them. They were the uh, the uh, the uh, the Levite priesthood was of the tribe of Benjamin, or they were for the Aaronite for the most part. So they would have took the Ark of the Covenant with them. To think that it's in Africa more than any other place would make sense. For the simple fact that those people that are in Africa right now, they are the oldest practice in Hebrews on the face of the earth. Only like to call them Jews. Really? That's a whole other story. Jews oh. and Hebrews are two different people. Okay. In my mind. So they are the oldest practice in Hebrews on the face of the earth. They call them the Limba. And they have a history about what happened when Solomon, King Solomon, went actually, excuse me, when Queen Makeda went actually to see King Solomon in Israel had a baby with him. The baby's called Menelik. They left with a cartery, with a contingent of priests and uh, elders back to Ethiopia. And they say they took the Ark of the Covenant with them. This church that they have in Ethiopia 
the basically the, the Ark of the Covenant Church is saying that this is where the Ark is at, at least in their mind. And they guard it. One person only. The high priest is even allowed to go in there. And they guard it with their life. Yeah, only one. I yeah. think it was like yeah. 20 years. Yeah. A couple of years ago, some country attacked the place. They were trying to go in that place and get the Ark of the Covenant. 800, some, almost a thousand people died defending the church. So they wouldn't go in there and get the Ark of the Covenant. This is new. You can go online and see this right now. They attacked the place. What happened, I don't know. What was the outcome? Did they come out of there with some evidence? I don't know. But almost a thousand people died defending that church when the foreign country the colonizer went in there trying to attack their church. Mm. They came from all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. Do um, you have? Do you have? Any, whether any, the story. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Go ahead. Whether the story is true or not, I know what these people say. They say they have it. Mm. Yeah. And do you have any any hypothesis? What is that thing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, <laughs> I could just tell you what the Bible says it is. Yeah. The Bible says that the high priest is able to communicate with God when he goes in once a year and sees. In fact, it says that the presence of God will be between the two carabines on the top of the Ark of the Covenant when the high priest goes in to communicate. That's what the Bible says, essentially. Mm. Now, uh, various scientists and various people have uh, uh, um, um, assumed what this thing is in terms of its, its technological specs and come up with it. Basically, it was a speaker. They call it the e the mm. communication device. Literally, almost like you, like a, 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 a Wi-Fi communication with the Creator. Mm. And that the breastplate of the, the breastplate of the high priest with the ephod, the twelve stones of the twelve tribes of Israel, each one of them being a different stone, has a certain different type of resonance in it. And it, him having this on with this gold plated on, and the, his 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 suit that he carried, and him being next to the ark of the covenant, caused the connection that allowed him to communicate almost like a shaman mm. would with the Creator and get divine revelations. Essentially, because we know Moses, who was the high priest of Israel at one time, went up on Mount Sinai, and while he was up on Mount Sinai, he communicated with God. Yeah. Or the I am, I am that I am through a burning bush, basically. And he wasn't allowed to see the face of God, but God put Yahweh, put him in a cleft in the rock, and passed by him. He was only able to see the ass of him or the backside of him for the most mm. part, but nevertheless, he communicated with God. You have hey. one minute remaining. On a one-on-one -on -one basis, he said no man could see the face of God and live, basically. Yet he was communicating with him, back and forth, having a conversation. He even gave him some information. He came down with what they called it the Ten Commandments. was taking it back to the tribe. Mm. <laughs> so Moses was dead. He was gone so long. When he got back there, he went back to their previous God. They had made the golden calf. The calf, they made the God of the people who they had left mm. after the Egyptian God. They worshipped in Mehur, the golden calf. Moses was upset. He took the calf, threw it in the fire, snuffed it down, made it fine fire, put it in water, and made them all drink it. That's made how them all drink was. it? I don't, don't know this part of this. It's in the Bible. Really? It's in the Bible. Most people don't read that part of it. It's in the Bible. If you read the Bible, it's in there. He so, smelted the calf down, put it in the fire, made it fine powder, put it in the water, made them drink it. Wow. It's in the Bible. People say, what are you talking about? I say, have you read your Bible? <laughs> Okay. It's in there. And 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 did it's this did this incredible. drinking was it was it like a, like a healing or was Thank it like Thank you for using GTL. Ah, uh, uh, oh. 15 minutes always, but I hope we will have at least a third call.